Hello, and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this example, I'm going to show you how to graph a rational function. Now, when you first look at these, they do look a little bit intimidating, but you can see that if we gather up enough information on them, that graphing them, it's actually not so bad. So, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the information that we will gather about this one. So, I like to organize a table of all the information we'll be finding. And here's basically what we're going to do. We're going to look at the original function, and we're also going to factor the top and the bottom. This will basically allow me to see a few more things in the function itself. Now we're going to look at the x and the y-intercepts by basically setting the appropriate uh, other variable to zero. We'll look at asymptotes by comparing powers for the horizontal ones, and looking at the bottom where it's zero for the vertical ones. Finally, we'll look for common factors for any holes that might exist in the graph. And if we don't have quite enough information, we'll even put in some additional test points to really figure out where the graph is. All right, so this is a lot of information. Let's go ahead and start collecting it up little by little. So the first thing that I want to do, say, with this function here is to really look at its factored form. So imagine taking this and factoring the top and the bottom. Well, looking at the top, I can see that it factors into an x plus 7 and an x minus 6. For the bottom, looks like we have an x minus 6 and an x plus 5. That looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and start hunting down some of our intercepts and our asymptotes. In this first one, we want to find some of the y-intercepts. These occur when x is equal to 0. So for this one, imagine plugging in a 0 for all of those x's. You can see that many of the x's will drop away entirely because of those zeros. In fact, the only thing that will be left will be a negative 42 over a negative 30. Now, fortunately, that fraction does reduce. And what that tells us about my y-intercept is that it crosses when x is equal to 0 and y is at 7 fifths. So there, now we got one of our intercepts. For the x-intercepts, we want to know basically when y is equal to 0. So imagine this thing being set equal to y, and you know, maybe that make that a zero. Now, with a rational expression like this, we're basically looking at the top and seeing where it is equal to zero. Well, because we can see our factors, it's equal to zero in two spots, when x is equal to a negative seven, and when x is equal to six. Now we might be a little bit worried about one of those factors, because notice how the x minus 6 also shows up in the bottom. When you have a common factor like that, it actually gives us the location of a hole in the graph. So there is a hole located when x is equal to 6. So I'm not going to include that in my intercepts. Instead, I'll only include the negative 7, so I can say it crosses the x-axis when x is equal to negative 7 and y is 0. There we go. Now let's go ahead and start gathering information about the asymptotes. We have horizontal asymptotes, and we have vertical asymptotes. For the horizontal ones, we want to compare the power in the top and the bottom of our rational function. Now it looks like these two powers are the same. When the powers are the same, you can take their leading coefficients and put them over one another. So my leading coefficient for both of these is 1. So my horizontal asymptote would be y equals 1 over 1, which of course I'd just write as y equals 1. All right, not too bad. Now let's go ahead and grab these vertical asymptotes. For these, you want to look at the bottom of your function and see where it is equal to 0. Remember that when x is equal to 6, that's our hole, so we're not going to include that as a vertical asymptote. Minus 5, however, is one that we can include. So at x equals negative 5, we will have a vertical asymptote. 
Now, this might be enough information to actually take a good look at the graph, so we might not need any additional test points. But feel free to choose any other values for x and plug them into the function, uh, just to give yourself a little bit more information. So let's go ahead and gather all of this up and see if we can actually see what the graph looks like. All right. So first I'm going to start plotting out all of my intercepts. So it looks like I have one at 0 and 7 fifths. So x is 0, y is 7 fifths. Uh, looks like it's somewhere around there. So I know that that is one place that my graph must go through. See, I have another place that it goes through at negative 7, 0. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it goes through right there. Now to really start getting a, a good picture of what this looks like, the asymptotes will be key. So I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So imagine putting a horizontal line right at 1. And a vertical asymptote at negative 5. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here. Now I can also see that there's going to be a hole when x is equal to 6. So when I draw my graph and I get to the place where x is actually equal to 6, I'll be sure to put a hole in my graph. All right, let's see if we can figure out where the arms of this rational function are. So I know it has to go through this point right here, and it's going to behave a lot like these asymptotes when it gets close to it. So I have one arm that kind of follows that asymptote. It goes through the point, and then it wants to follow the other asymptote. So this part of our rational function looks like that. Now for this other piece, it's actually going to be on the top piece because it's going to want to follow this vertical asymptote and it's going to want to follow the horizontal one. You also know that it's not on the bottom because we didn't find any more places where it crossed the x-axis. So let's go ahead and draw this up here. So it wants to follow the asymptote. It needs to go through that y-intercept and then it wants to follow the other asymptote. Now remember, we must put a hole at, at x equals 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's actually a gap in our graph. There we go. So now this represents our rational function. And you can see if you gather up enough information, that's actually not too bad. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.